One of the key features of teaching for mastery is using uh, representations. And one of the things people often ask me to show them is about how to use manipulatives. We mainly focus on using two types of manipulatives in our secondary teaching. Usually we use these algebra disks to teach various different things. We're going to start with negative numbers today and for negative numbers we'd use the blue ones and on the back of them are the light blue negative ones. That's what we're going to use today. Because we're a bit more limited at the minute though, we've been using red and yellow counters with the red standing for a negative one and the yellow standing for a positive one. And this has worked just as well with negative numbers. They're a bit cheaper to get hold of so you can buy more and obviously at the moment we need more because students can't share the equipment in quite the same way. Before you start teaching with them, be really careful that you think about the logistics. Plan time in to give them out and to collect them in and make sure you're giving them clear instructions about whether you want them to just take the ones out, for instance, or you want them to take the ones and the X's. Have a think about how you're going to see what they're doing. So mine put all the books away, they put the counters to the side, they put a whiteboard in front of them, and when I ask them to show me something, they put those counters on the whiteboard so I can clearly see everybody in the room. They will drop them on the floor, they will get them mixed up. If you've got two students sat next to each other, give them one bag or one group of counters because they're going to get them mixed up. Um, and just let them know if they drop them on the floor, it's no problem, just pick them up. Be careful at the end of your lesson, we make sure we, the students all put their bags and equipment on the desks, they stand up behind their chair, then everybody checks the floor before they leave. And do give it a few lessons. At the beginning, you need more time for the organisation of it. So in the first lesson of using the counters, and I've given them the bag, I've asked them just to get the blue ones out, which show a one and a negative one. I'll ask them to show me the number two. And everyone can normally do that, they get the two blue counters. Then I ask them to show me negative two. And they're generally quite good at that one too. Then I ask them to show me zero, but tell them you must use some counters. And it's quite interesting the different things that you get. Most of them do show either one of these kind of examples um, and then you can ta start the discussion about one subtract one being zero. But the thing I found about manipulatives, if they've shown me some stuff that I never even thought of, it really has raised misconceptions that I didn't realise the students had. Next I go on to ask them to show me three and they're generally happy with that. But then I ask them to show me three another way and I give them a prompt with more than three counters. Now you might end up with a bit of discussion at this point, a bit of helping the students out, but you do get students, they do understand what you've just talked about, that one and negative one making zero, um, and you do get them showing you this kind of thing. But it's really interesting with manipulatives. They often come out with misconceptions that you would have never realised, um, and it's really useful just to take your time with this kind of lesson and look at what the students are showing you. Another thing to point out at this point is the way they set their counters out on their desk. Now you can highlight this to them at this point or you can do it from the very beginning. This is an example of a much better way of organising the counters and you'll see why later when we come on to doing calculations with negative numbers. But you should always ask them to line up their positive numbers at the top or their positive x's at the top and their negatives underneath. It just helps them spot that zero pair much more easily. So there's the zero pair. And at this point, I'd go into lots more discussion about that. The main point of this lesson is for the students to understand what we mean by zero pair. That phrase zero pair comes into solving equations, all sorts of other things that we're going to go on to do. Um, and that is the only thing really that you want them to go away knowing that zero pair. Now, the purpose of the next bit of the lesson is to get them used to using the counters. And I asked them to show me all of these. I didn't show them all at once. I said them one at a time. If I felt I needed to write them down, I think I did. Um, I wrote them on the board as I said them. And we, it, we went quite slowly. Um, and my point at this was just making sure they understood that a zero pair was a zero pair and that they were setting out the counters with the positives on the top and the negatives on the bottom. So this is the first one, for example, and what we'd point out to the students is that this is zero. And what we'd do is we'd say because they're zero and we'd ask them to physically move them away with their hands because they're zero. They don't make a diff. They're, they're not 
within the calculation, if you like. And you have to think carefully about how you're going to explain that. But we just ask them to remove them and say, so what is the answer? What have we got? And they all can see it's one. Um, but it's just really emphasising that those counters are zero. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I just want to point out the very last one as well. And this is where we emphasise putting the positives at the top. It works particularly well for this one as well. Um, but what they can see here is they can see that this these become zero, so they remove them. Um, just make sure you don't say take away because you're not taking them away. We remove them from the calculation. They're zero. They don't add anything to our calculation. And they can see here that they're left with negative three. And just having the positives on the top and the negatives on the bottom allows them to kind of see that you are subtracting the five, even though the five is negative and is written first, we are doing two, subtract five. Helps them to understand they keep this, that the sign stays with the number. Um, and that would be it for the lesson. We would just spend time going through this. And once you've got the packing away as well, so you get them to put everything in the bag, they also struggle. The bags are those click ones. They struggle to seal them, so you have to make sure you seal them. But do allow that time at the end to tidy up. What I suggest you do is I suggest you, with whatever tool you're going to do this with, if you're going to use red and yellow counters, it works exactly the same. If you've got the discs, use them. But the other thing is, if you haven't got any of those and you want to an, use an online package, I'll just show you now what you should use. If you've never used mathspot.com, I suggest you go and have a look. It's a brilliant website. Um, mathspot has loads of manipulatives on his website. So whatever manipulatives you want to have a go at, I would explore what's on his, especially if you can't get the physical ones or you don't want to use the physical ones in the current circumstances. Um, and we're going to, for this one, I suggest you have a go at this one here, the Algebra Discs one. If you would prefer to do it um, showing the students online rather than having the physical counters in front of them, then I would recommend using this one. I'm not sure where else you can get this software. Um, I can't move the things around at the minute. This is just a picture. But what I'd recommend you do now is go onto mathspot.com, go onto the algebra disks, and if you just click on the one yellow one on the bottom, move it to the middle, um, you can work out how to use this. Uh, reverse at the top is how you make it into a negative one. Um, and you can show them that way as well. Um, the good thing about this as well is they can draw counters with a one in them and a negative one, so they can draw it in the book. Um, and it's just really good to use. The main thing I get in the first lesson is the zero pair. That's what I'm aiming to get out of it, that they understand a zero pair. And a nice way to end it is to use it with the X. Does an X and a negative X make zero? And that's a nice little way to finish it off and get them thinking. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I will make more about the next sequence in learning in the future. Thank you.